Welcome to Let the Light In TV. Today we have another review where we are taking a look at the Zeppon Micro 2 Plus Motorized Slider. Now this will run you 600 Canadian dollars, 445 American. And the reason that this is the Micro 2 Plus is because the Micro 2 was released without these little table legs here. So the Micro 2 Plus has the table legs to allow it to stand up by itself. And I really don't know why the previous version would be released without it, but this is really a nice, nice addition. Now these little legs do have a, a little adjustability to them as far as height, but I wouldn't be exactly dependent on it because it's not going to give you a whole lot of height, maybe just a couple centimeters if you need a little bit um, more boost and you're on a slightly uneven plane. But other than that, the ability for it to stand up by itself now, and you don't have to hook it up onto a tripod head is brilliant. I love it. It's amazing. All right, now let's get into the details and kind of the build quality of this product. So it weighs itself two kilograms. That's with the motor on. It can take a 4.5 kilogram load size. That's uh, whether you're doing it all kind of angles, whether you're doing it horizontal on an angle, whether you're doing it vertical, whatever you want to do, it can take 4.5 kilograms. And when it's in, it's sitting desktop mode, we'll call it. That's what they're calling it. So desktop mode, it can take a weight of up to eight kilograms. So it can handle quite a bit. Now it does have fluid damping. It's made of aircraft grade aluminum alloy, and that feels really nice, solid and smooth. Now it can do manual or motorized operation. We'll get to manual a little bit later and we'll talk about motorized for now. So motorized operation, the size of it with the motor on is 43 centimeters and has a 54 centimeter travel distance. Now, if you take the motor off, the manual size is gonna come down to 34.7 centimeters and 56 centimeters of travel distance. Now let's talk about it with the motor on. First of all, it has physical buttons that you can use, or you can also use an app. We'll get into the app later. Let's talk about the physical buttons. So physical buttons here, power button, just a couple seconds, boom, and now we're on. So clicking the power button will give you different speeds. These speeds are only related to the use of the physical buttons on the device. The speed that is being shown here on the light has no meaning at all if you're using the app. So just to clarify, only with the buttons. So you have two buttons, two directional buttons on the top, a double tap sends the slider moving all by itself and double tap to cancel. And you'll notice here, I'll do it again. It does come to a nice, slow, smooth stop. So double tap, there we go. If you just hold it, then it is going as long as you hold it. You release the hold and the movement comes once again to a nice, smooth completion. There you go. Now, let's talk about the app. Just a second, let's switch the camera here so we can take a better look. All right, let's talk about the app. It is Bluetooth connectivity. We have our Zeppelin Lab app here. Our slider is already connected, so we're gonna hit done, and we are now into the user interface. How do you move the slider? Well, it's pretty simple. You just move the joystick right here. Now, you can see the sensitivity of the joystick is uh, in relation to the speed of the slider. So if we do move it just a little, it goes slower. And if we move it all the way, then it goes a whole lot quicker. Now you can set different waypoints on here. I've already set them up here. So we have waypoint A. Now you'll note we have a total speed section. The total speed section is only when you're moving between waypoints, not when you're moving with the joystick. Remember the joystick is sensitive. So our total speed is at 13%. You can see I can blast it right now. And if I move it all the way up to 100%, then again, I can move it really quite quickly. And uh, it's, it's not, the speed hasn't changed at all. The speed is only when you're moving in between the waypoints. So we have three different waypoints here. If we wanna loop and have continuous motion, then that is the button right there that is going to loop our motion. We can now hit play. And our slider is moving at 100% speed. If we want to vary the speed, then we come down here and we use our speed slider. And now it's only moving at 
50% speed. So our speed slider is only when moving in between waypoints, it does not affect the joystick at all. That's um, the little kind of pernickety thing, number one. Number two, we have waypoint B up here. If I wanna go in and adjust these waypoints and get rid of waypoint B, I cannot come in and click here on waypoint B. What I have to do is I have to clear our last waypoint, our very end waypoint, and start and go backwards. So I can clear waypoint C, there it is, and now it's gone, and then now I can work on waypoint B. So if you had you know, five different waypoints and wanted to adjust C, you have to work all the way back, reset it, and then come forward again. Um, what was actually not clear to me is that it's the last one that has to be cleared first. Uh, I figured that out after a little bit, um, but overall it does give you a good tutorial on how to use it and so I am quite pleased with the app. There are different modes available to you. Our modes are down here and so we were in video mode. There is also intelligent time lapse. So this is going to give you some suggestions on the time lapse. Of course, you need to uh, hook up your camera using the shutter control port uh, that is available on here. And so you have intelligent time lapse that's going to give you kind of preset modes. And there's, and there's also customized time lapse where you can play around and adjust everything. There is stop motion if you want to go ahead and do that. And then these are uh, the next couple settings are specific to. Uh, kind of Zeppelin additions to the slider. So if you don't have the Zeppelin head, you're not gonna be able to use these modes. And what they are is panorama mode and matrix mode. So I cannot use them because I do not have that attachment. And then finally, we have camera mode, but of course, uh, we don't have our trigger hooked up. So that is the app overall, very uh, easy to use. I like it, it's uh, generally quite clear. You just have to figure out those two couple of things, but after that, it's uh, wonderful, wonderful to use. All right, let's continue talking about the device. The motor is really quite quiet. They have it rated at 39 decibels. Now, if you're going to do some macro stuff and you're gonna locally record audio kind of just in front of the device, then probably the motor is going to interfere with the audio you're capturing. But if your audio source is further out, let's say two meters away, then at that point, I wouldn't worry about the motor interfering with you capturing your audio. So overall, depending on what you're doing, really not something that you're gonna have to worry about a whole lot. Other than that, uh, the batteries are a Sony L-series battery, so it accepts the F750, the 970, and the 550 series battery. Now let's talk about the USB-C port. It comes with both a USB-C port and a shutter release cable port, but specifically for the USB-C port, it does not provide power or charging by any means. So whenever I first got the device, I tried to plug it into an outlet via the USB-C cable and tried to power it without a battery. It would not do it. Uh, if you have a battery uh, in uh, attached to the motor, then it's not gonna provide a power either. It is only for firmware upgrades, which kind of I find disappointing because I would like to just leave the, a battery kind of permanently on the device and just plug it in and charge it. But I guess at the end of the day, no matter what, you're gonna have to plug something in somewhere. So um, to me, a little bit disappointing, but you know, not a device breaker by any means. All right, moving on. Let's say your battery runs out. Well, you can't charge it and you can't provide power to it by any other means. So your battery's out, but you're not done your shoot yet. You wanna continue uh, getting footage. Well, you can use this device in kind of a manual mode without the motor. You can take the motor off. And the system that they have devised to make this transition is really quite clever and very quick. They claim you can do it in 30 seconds. I don't think I can quite do it in 30, but it is very easy to do. So let's do it together. First off, you uh, there's a little, uh, the cable runs through here and there's a screw in here. So at this point, it's actually uh, not righty tighty lefty loosey. It's right to undo, so here we go. Our top cable's off. If we go to the top here, this uh, section where the cable kind of comes in is actually just magnetic. And so what you need to do here is you just push it in a little bit to release it, and there we go, the magnetic part's off. To finally take the motor off, this little silver screw here, we're going to take that off. I've already taken the screw off on my side, and there, the motor is off just like that. And so now, we wanna attach this manually. Here is our extra little wire here, and you can see the screw and the magnet. So 
We, the best uh, kind of easiest way I've found to do this is to flip it over. You do have to be careful though a little bit because now everything is loose and moves around quite easily. The easiest way I've found to do this, slip the motor or slip the cable here under, receive it with your fingers. And if you just press down, then it will slip in, test it, lock it, bring it around and we are ready to wrap it up and lock it into our screw section. And just like that, wasn't probably quicker than 30 seconds, but just like that, we are ready to go in manual operation. That's pretty quick, it's pretty nifty. I really like this system. It's very, very easy to use. Now, it's still extremely silky smooth, very fluid, easy to use. I don't know if you watched the last lens review that I posted, but I did use this in manual kind of operation mode to get some product shots of the lens that I was reviewing. Now, I didn't have a dynamic background, so it kind of just looked like a Ken's burn, Ken Burns uh, zoom in on a photo, but it was really, really smooth, and I was really happy with what I captured. Now, one thing, whenever I reviewed the Moses Lipod Pro, and I'm assuming this is because of the travel distance that it um, is available on that product, I would take a shot through the motion and it would be bumpy. And some of those bumps were not fixable in post, meaning this gorgeous shot that I set up and tried to get was completely unusable. It's not the case with this. This is silky smooth, whether it's through the motor or whether it's through manual operation, it is always smooth. I have not had any bumps. I have not had any warps that I can't take care of. Everything is usable. Uh, I haven't even really needed to even put a stabilizer on the footage. It just comes out perfectly ready to go. One last little thing here. There is a lock and an unlock button. So when we're in manual mode, I have it locked right now and so there we go, I have it locked right now, and there it cannot move. And so if you're gonna throw it in your book bag, it's not gonna move, it's not gonna jostle about. And then if I hit unlock, there we go, we are released and back to our smooth operation. Overall, I have really, really enjoyed the Zeppelin Micro 2 Plus. It is extremely uh, compact, it's small, it's generally lightweight, two kilograms isn't a whole lot if you just wanna throw it in your book bag and take it along with you. The tabletop legs are brilliant. You can attach it onto a tripod, get some you know angled shots if you want to. Overall, it's been a wonderful product. And personally, I do much prefer it to everything else that I've used. I think really it's going to become quite a staple item for me and using it to get product shots and some nice, smooth, silky motion video. So I hope that I have informed you adequately on this product, on the Micro 2 Plus. If you would like to purchase it, if you think you're gonna enjoy it really as much as I am, and I really, I do love this, it's amazing. If you think you would love it and will use it as much as I will, then there are purchasing links down below. You can also uh, go and follow Dustin Abbott, check out some photo reviews down there, get some merchandise, whatever you wanna do, it's all down below, so go ahead and check that out. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day, and remember to let the light in.